So now we're coming to one of my favorite lectures, which is macros. Okay. So in computer science, a lot of times we find ourselves doing very repetitive stuff. So, uh, for example, if I open a new file up, uh, it's pretty common for me to type the same thing every time I start a new um, C++ file. Hashtag include you know, IO stream. Right, I don't want to type this every time. Like this is, I'm, I'm bored already, right? I make you guys type this in CSI 40 so it drills it into your head so that you get, you know, used to it so you understand, you know, like the you get the muscle memory, let's say, of how to do it. But uh, I don't need to do that. I got it memorized. So I just do that. What up, play it? So, uh, <laughs> I have a macro. And so what I do, a macro is like a saved bunch of keystrokes. And Vim makes it uh, very easy to record keystrokes and play them back later. So let's let's take a look at, an, uh, yeah, let's just start a new file, like whatever. So if you want to record a macro, the key to record a macro, the key to record a macro is Q, and you have to bind it to a key on the keyboard. So uh, what does that mean? So like QH would record macro H. QK would record macro K. And these are shared among every instance of them. So if you record a macro in one of your files, it'll work in all of your files. It's not just in this current main.cc. If you record a macro, every file that you use has that macro now until you make a mistake like I do every once in a while and type QM and then lose my M macro, which is the one that I use to spit out all these starter code. And then I got it. Then I take a deep sigh. I'm like, I'm going to have to type the, the magic over. It's okay. It's a learning experience. I record it. Okay. So let me show you guys how to do this. Cause this is your lab time for today is actually making a macro. So, uh, and then when you're done, actually, let me go over that. Uh, when you're done, when you're done recording your keystrokes, hit Q to save. That's it. Uh, then to replay it, you type so the at symbol followed by the key that you key bound. To replay macro H, you type. K to replay macro K, et cetera, et cetera. So you have a separate macro bound to every single key that you want. Yeah. Uh, can you sign the macro to your number pad? I wouldn't do it because Vim number pad support is uh, dicey sometimes. Uh, you, you can try it. Um, but uh, Vim actually is strangely, um, yeah, it, it doesn't always work when you're working with the number pad. I, I, would, I would probably tend to avoid it, but you, you can do it. Um, you know, you do you. Okay, so I've already got my macro M, right? And so every time you see me create a new file, I type at M and and it types all that code and then it leaves my cursor right here in the middle of the open brackets. So I don't have to retype that every single time I make a new file. Okay. So uh, let's do this. So just uh, if you want to, if you if you guys, this will be your homework, right? Your, your lab time for today. Uh, but then... Uh, I'm going to show you some more advanced stuff with macros in a second, but you know, let's say QW, right? We're gonna we're gonna type QW, so we're gonna record macro W. Okay. So QW, and then notice down here at the bottom of the screen, it says recording macro W. Now it's recording, so everything I type is now going to be part of the macro. So I'm going to hit I to go into insert mode, and I will type in you know hashtag include IO stream. IO stream using namespace good and main. And I want you guys to kind of customize it a little bit, you know what I mean? Like add in uh, unordered map, you know, if you're into hash tables, add in, you know, add in vector. If you don't want IO stream, you can use my uh, slash public slash read. H library, et cetera, et cetera. So customize it however you want. And then finish with the uh, 
the cursor inside of main, and then hit Q to stop. And now you've got a macro, and you use this every time you create a file. Um, so if I just come out of this and come into a new file, and hit at W, ba -da -ba -da -ba -da, there you go. For a second, W, I think I, oh, I included the delete. <laughs> That's funny. I included the delete in the file in the macro, so it typed up and then wiped it all out. It's absolutely hilarious. If you mess up and type a backspace using the macro, it type it will type it and then backspace it back out. So it's usually not a big deal, all right? So if we uh, then again, we could say at w, uh, sorry, record w. So we could type uh, include io whatever and then back up io stream like that. W, we get it, All right? So it'll retype the mistake and then it'll delete the mistake and then retype it correctly. So uh, if that bothers you that the macro has all of your mistakes recorded for posterity in it, then you might want to record it again without the typos. But it, it like, you can't even see it, right? Like I, I, I mistyped I was streaming and I backed up and I retyped it. Watch, if I hit, at W, like you don't see it. It would bother you. Yeah. Kind of bothers me too. It's a keylogger, yeah. And it records every command, whether you're in insert mode or command mode. And so if I do uh, QW and I say delete two line, two, two, two words rather like that, then um, But at any time, I can just come in here and say at w, hit the wrong macro, at w, and it deletes two words. You see that? At w, it deletes two words. So it, it doesn't have to be you typing things. It could be literally any command you want. Delete three words, move up five lines, paste them. In fact, uh, one of the best macros I ever wrote, uh, I had data that looked like this. Um, let's just make up some fake data here. So it's, a, it's triangle data. So these are points in space. And uh, I had uh, purchased a 3D asset from an artist, and the artist had all the triangles backwards. So uh, I don't know if you guys know this in, in video games, but we only draw the outside of objects usually, unless they're transparent and you can see on the inside. We usually only draw the outside of an object. Have you, ever got, have you, have you guys ever had a camera go like inside of a door or inside of a person, and then all of a sudden it's like hollow on the inside and you're looking out through their skin. And maybe you see their eyes just floating there, which is really creepy and disturbing. Sometimes their mouth too, which is even worse. But like, you know, the camera rotates into the wall and then the wall vanishes, it rotates into a rock, the rock vanishes from the inside. Uh, the reason for that is we only draw the outside by default because there is no reason to draw, like you, you got the triangles here, there's no reason to draw those triangles when you can't see them. Because if the object's solid, you cannot see the front of my touch screen right now, right? And when I rotate it this way, you can't see my camera. And so we only draw the triangles facing us. And this artist gave me all of the triangles backwards. So I, you know, I'm, I'm viewing this object and I can see the inside of it from the outside. And then when you rotate it, you see the other inside. It was really trippy. To look at it, but it was all like wrong, you know. I was like, ah, and so I had all the XYZ values in text. I'm like, all right, I can fix this, you know. So I, so I sit there and think about it. I'm like, all right, how am, I, how am I gonna fix this? You know, let me put this into a text file so it stops yelling at me. Move S and triangle. So I got, I got this text file here. And I need to like switch because the way that it tells if something is clockwise or counterclockwise is if it's clockwise, it's facing away from you. So if it goes one, wait, it's all mirrored. But you, you get what I'm saying. Like if it goes clockwise, it's facing away from you. And so if it's facing away from you and you rotate it like this, it's now counterclockwise, right? If it goes one, two, three, and you rotate it this way, it's one, two, three, clockwise, counterclockwise as it faces towards you or away from you. 
So all I had to do was switch uh, two of these these points, right? So that instead of it going clockwise, it went counterclockwise. So let me show you how to do a macro to do that. So I'm going to go Q. Somebody give me a letter. You love the eyeballs and teeth. Yeah, that's this is classic. Like. Right, like that. Yeah. <laughs> Ubisoft cancels pen sequel to horrific floating eyeball teeth, man. I think it's Black Flag, right? It's showing the inside of his head, but not the outside, right? Or no, it's actually just showing the hair. <laughs> yeah. E. All right, we'll do E. So I'm going to go Q E. Oh, I'm already recording Q. Okay, sorry. Stop. Okay. So I'm going to type QE, and that's recording macro E now. Now, whenever you do a macro like this, you have to think about it. Like, okay, well, I don't want to go right, you know, like to here because these numbers might not be the same. You know what I mean? Like, there might not be the same number of letters in every number. So you don't want to just like go right, you know, with the arrow keys. Using the arrow keys is actually fairly. Um, dubious, right? Because you have no idea how many digits are going to be in each number, right? So it's much better to use word movements like www.google.com. No, sorry. www. W moves one word at a time. Or E. E takes you to the end of a word. Okay. And so if you move to the end of the word, then these things could be quite large. And then if you type E, 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 you see that it's jumping to the end of a word. Okay. B, 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 backwards a word at a time. Okay. You want to use motion commands like that. A caret, which is shift six, the XOR operator, also known as the exponentiation operator, uh, takes you to the beginning of the line. Dollar sign takes you to the end of the line. So there's way you want to move through these lines without, um, having to go like arrow keys, right? Because that's super dubious, right? Because each line could have a different number of digits on it. You guys follow me? Okay. So what I want to do is I want to swap, I want to swap this and this. Okay. All right, so let me think about how to do this. So I'm going to record macro E. So I want to jump to the first, I want to jump to the first comma. I do that by front slash comma. Oh shoot, no, because we got commas on the inside, huh? Never mind. Uh, never mind, never mind, never mind. Get commas inside of them too. So what I really want to do is find the first. Stop recording. Stop recording. Stop the tape. <laughs> All right, start over. So I want to actually find the first instance of close parentheses, comma. And hit that. Okay. And now, is it safe to move right two arrow? Two, can I arrow right twice? I think so. So I think all of them, it's two characters to the first begin to here. Now I'm going to type a D to shift five. Shift five is a matching parentheses. That's going to delete everybody inside of there. Now I'm going to hit dollar sign to go to the end of the line. Hit P to paste. Now we got two commas, so we gotta clean that up. And then, all right, all right, all right, we can do this, we can do this. Question mark searches backwards, comma, comma, chameleon, all right? X to delete it. Now we wanna jump forward where that comma needs to go. That's gonna be a front slash, close parentheses, open parentheses there. And then I'm gonna hit P to paste that comma. Now we're good, but when you finish a macro, if you if I just finish like this, it's kind of okay, but it's not good. You want to finish exactly where you began, but on the line down one, because then you can just play the macro again, and it'll switch the next line, and then move down a line. Play the macro again, switches them, moves down a line. So whenever you finish a macro like this, you want to hit shift six, and down one line, and we're done. 
Now, will this work? Let's find out. So to replay that macro, which was E, type at E, and voila, you guys see that? It swapped the second and third points. And if you want to play the same macro again, at, 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 you see that? At, 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 at. And if you want to do multiple lines at once, three, at, at, and there we go. Look at that. So what I did on that file was once I did that, and, and you know, you screw up sometimes. Like you're like, oh, okay, oh shoot, yeah, oh, dang it, damn it. I, I typed right arrow four times, ah, oh, shoot, you know, and, and it breaks on the next line. You're like, ah. You know, like you have to, you have to kind of like be very careful with it. You have to know your motion commands and then pretty well to do this. Um, but then I just typed 100,000 at at, and then it went and it just parsed that entire file and it worked. I could have written a C++ program to do it. I could have. Um, But it was faster to do it this way. You know what I mean? It's like you just kind of sit there and you go, all right, all right, all right, all right, she, she, she. And then you go, boop, boop, and it goes, boop, and it just rewrites your whole file. And you go, yeah, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. <laughs> so you definitely want to plan this macro out before recording. Yeah. But the thing is, like, if you screw up a macro, like, mm, not a big deal. You know? Like, you just hit undo. You, ah, I screwed up. And so I can do 10 at at, and you see that? Just put them all back the way it was before. Hit dot, uh, actually dot's a bad idea. Uh, 10 at at again, put them all. Yeah. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Um, dot, by the way, is, is the automatic macro. So if I type O, yo, 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 like that, and I hit dot, and I hit dot, and I hit dot, it auto repeats the last command that you did. So if you're really clever, you can actually pack a lot of things into a um, into a command, right? So like if I wanted to replace the uh, 60 with a 90 or something like that, I could do a S9, and then I could search for a six and then hit dot, 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 dot. And that's how I do search and replace it again. I, I, Vim has a global search and replace command from here. I don't trust it. Mm -mm. I don't trust it. Because I, I want to see every change that I make and I just go through and I'm like, yep, that's okay. Yep, that's okay. You know, you, you'd be surprised like, um, you know, like I, I was reading code and I was like, I was like, um, you know, clean, uh, clean the left float out of the dryer. Uh, it was something like that. Anyone want to know how you can have left float in a dryer? <laughs> clean, the, you know, your dryer, you know, before you, before you dry your clothes, you should clean the left float out. What does that mean? <laughs> Somebody had done a global search and replace for uh, integer to float. <laughs> and so yeah, I'm just I'm just sitting there staring at this comment like, am I supposed to know? <laughs> like, is that a thing? Like, la, la float is that? Is that like some technical term I don't know? La float? Like what? What you know? <sighs> In in, in uh, computer science, linting, by the way, uh, means like uh, means like a static analyzer, uh, kind of like my easy peasy thing, where linting means it kind of pre-checks your code to make sure everything's okay. And so uh, instead of saying, you know, clean the float out of the dryer, it was like, you know, make sure you have the float turned on on your code, something like that. It, it, it was like, it was like, you know, it was like, uh, 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 always, always left float before compiling. It was, it was something like that. I was just like, <laughs> and so uh, yeah, I don't, I don't do global searches and replace. I, I, I look at each one. I hit end to go to the next dot to repeat the last command. End to go to the next. 
dot to repeat the command. I look at everything and, and make sure I'm not changing, All right? If I search for int, you see, see what shows up there, All right? So <laughs> this lint is extra fine and hard to get out of the screen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so what, the reason why I'm showing you macros today is because it is your homework assignment. You're gonna hit homework assignment, it's called bitfield. And uh, bitfield, uh, there is some really annoying parts. Now the assignment itself is actually not that hard. Uh, all you have to do is implement um, inserting, searching, and deleting from a bitfield, which I've already given you the code for. You already know how to do that. Uh, now there's a couple twists in there. Uh, there's three different bit fields and they have slightly different rules. But it's basically, if you pick up the red key, then you have the red key. Um, that's what it looks like. Uh, so when you run the program, you're gonna say like, I'm gonna pick up the red key. I'm gonna pick up the green key. I'm gonna pick up the indigo, is that a key, indigo? No, indigo is not a key. Right. Uh, let's pick up the purple key. No, no purple. The green key, yellow key, and red key. And then, what each time you do this, you're setting a bit on a bit field. So you've got a single in, a single integer, or maybe it's a 64-bit integer, it doesn't really matter, because there's not that many keys. And you're just gonna turn a bit on, that's it. Um, there's a little bit of inheritance, there's three different bit fields, each of the bit fields will inherit from the root bit field, because they have slightly different abilities, so rather than repeating yourself, um, you can just inherit off of it and reuse the code. So add uh, turns on a bit, and then you can do something like query. Do I have the yellow key? Yes, I do. Do I have the blue key? No, I don't. All right. uh, and then what's the command? Like drop, drop red? No, it's not really the name of the command. Uh, delete. So if we add red, query red, we have it. Uh, delete red, query red, false. That's it, that's a whole assignment, okay? That doesn't sound too annoying. Why did the professor say it's annoying? Well, because you're gonna have to be able to parse the input from the player. And so inside of the, um, I've got all the things set up for you and I've shown you three different ways of doing it. Enum, each thing's a power of two, bunch of constants, everything's a power of two, uh, bunch of hashtag defines, this is a C style way of doing it, all of them are powers of two. They're all equivalent, they're all different, but they're all basically the same thing. Pros and cons probably to each one. I'd probably prefer the enum version the, the best, but you know, whatever, they're all, they're all basically equivalent. Um, and so you have to parse the input. So the user will type something like add web underscore hook. You might notice there's nowhere in here do you have an if statement saying if the user typed web hook, give them web hook. So what you're gonna have to do is use a macro. You have to do something like this. So let me just grab a couple of these lines like this. I'm just gonna toss it, toss it down here somewhere. Okay, so what you want is to have code that says if user type the string the weapon hook, then return one, All right? So you're gonna have a function that converts the word into the enum value because C++ does not have very good enums at all. You can't convert an enum into a string. There is something called magic enums, which you might wanna do if you don't wanna learn how to write macros, but I'd recommend learning how to write a macro. So we wanna take this line here and convert it into like this line here, all right? So let's do this. D E recording macro. Delete two words. Cool. I for insert. If stir double equals double quote. Escape. Need to go to the end of the word. Remember, I'm not right arrowing. If I right arrow, then the macro will only work with words that are exactly nine letters long. E takes you to the end of the word. A to append, double quote, close parentheses, return. The 
escape, shift A to append at the end of the line, semicolon, escape. Shift six to go to the beginning of the line, down arrow, dot. At E, at at, at at, at at, you guys see that? That's how we do. And this will work for all of these, right? At at. Ain't it cool? It's pretty cool. Now, I mean, you want to leave your hashtag defines alone. But what you're going to do is you're going to make a function that'll say if the user types in this string return this, you know, this number. So, um, you know, you're going to leave all this code alone. You're going to copy it and paste it and then go whoop, like that. Okay. And if you know macros, this will take you all of 30 seconds to do. If you don't know macros, you're going to be cursing my name. It's not impossible, but there are a lot of weapons that you have to write if, else, if, else, if, else, if, else, or switch statements. It's just long enough to make it annoying for you guys to do it the long, slow way. So this, this assignment, yeah, it's to teach you about bit fields, but it's also to be just annoying enough you're like, you know, what? I really don't want to have to rewrite all of these things by hand. I don't want to write all of these by hand. That's really tedious. Maybe I, maybe it'll be less effort for me to learn how to write a macro. And then you'll learn how to write macros. And then this will shave years off of your life in a good way. Working time off your life. Doing the most tedious, repetitive tasks you can imagine. So the perfect alignment of numbers is destroyed. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I was thinking about, I was looking at that, right? I was like, all right, should I delete the space? Do I, do I want to risk it? You know, I could probably write another macro here. Let's do at R. Oh, there's, yeah, let's see, uh, no, 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 QR. Okay, so dollar sign to go there, B to go backwards, D, B. Now if that erased the return, but it's fine, it's fine, insert. Return there, shift six, down arrow, Q. At R, at at, at at, at at. There you go. So if you if you don't want those extra spaces, you can clean it up using a get it to shut up about, about that. And so yeah, you're gonna need some way because the user is gonna be typing in these words. Add Weapon hook, add weapon spanner, add weapon axe. And you need your input parser to convert between the string that they give you and the actual number that's in the enum. And you're gonna have to have a function probably to go both ways. So that if you have 16, you print out, I have the axe. And if, if the user types in, drop the axe, you have to say that's bit 16. And that's the only annoying part of this entire assignment. Okay. And it's deliberately annoying. It's deliberately annoying so that it motivates you to learn macros because macros are life, okay? There's so many times in the computer science world where you just end up doing repetitive tasks over and over again. And you'd be surprised how many programmers are fine with it. Like, I saw this one guy and he had like, he had like his folder up open here and he's like, oh, I need to rename everything. And so he's just going through click, you know, I'm gonna name it lecture. And he goes to the next one. It's now, I'm like, why are you? And he had like a thousand files in the directory. You know what I mean? I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> like in, in all seriousness, <laughs> this is going to take you like all day. And it's going to be the most tedious, repetitive, mindless task possible to like change all the spaces in the file name to be underscores. He's like, well, you know, I don't know. I'm like, why don't you write a macro to do it? He's like, well, that just seems like a lot of work. I'm like, you know what seems like more work? Renaming a thousand files by hand. That seems like a lot more and also a lot more like just mentally draining, repetitive, boring tasks. You know, just learn to learn macros. Well, it seems hard. All you have to do is record your keystrokes. That's it. You know? It's not, it's not bad. This whole lecture is half an hour, you know? 
And a lot of it's just me trying to motivate you to do macros, which you should, because they're awesome. So inside of your bit field directory, there is a file called macro.txt. This has some helpful, uh, helpful uh, Vim commands. Uh, mark is actually one of my favorite ones. Uh, as you all know, Matthew, Mark, and Vim, John. Uh, only Mark, though, got a uh, command in Vim. John was unfortunately left out. So you can mark parts of your code by typing M and then giving it, a, a, a again, a key bind, like Q or R or something like that. So like uh, for the weapon zone here, maybe I'm going to type M, W, W for weapon. It's like setting a bookmark inside of your file. If you're inside of job bit field, I'm going to type MJ, like Michael Jackson. Then up here under bit field, I'll just type MB. Okay. And then at any point, I can jump to the part of my file that I've marked before by using single quote. So I, if I type single quote um, W, it takes me down to, you see this, weapons bit field. Single quote J takes me up to job bit field. Single quote W, weapons bit field. Single quote J. And it's permanent. So if I quit out and I come back in, which I unfortunately saved all this stuff in here, so let me delete all that. Hopefully I didn't, good, I undid all that, good. Um, it's permanent. So if I quit out and I come back in, I could say single quote J and it's still there. Single quote B, single quote B, jumps up to the bit field. Single quote W goes to the weapon. Single quote J, I have bookmarks now inside of my code. You can also use this as a motion command. So if I say delete to J, mark J, I say delete single quote J, and it erases all of that code. So this is the easiest way of mass deleting and mass copying things in Vim. Uh, the other way that people do it is like shift V to go into visual mode, select everything and hit D. But if you've got like a lot, a lot, a lot of lines, then what we do is we'll just go to like line 500, you know, and hit shift J, shift G, sorry. Um, so I'll set like a mark here, and then I'm gonna scroll down thousands and thousands of lines, just pretend I scroll thousands of lines, and I can say D uh, to that mark, and it deletes all those things. And then I can move around and hit P to paste. Okay. So setting mark is the best way of doing mass copy and pasting, right? So we'll come up here, set a mark here, then go delete to that mark, and it deletes everything in between, and then I can move it around and paste it or just leave it deleted. Things like that. So marks are super cool, super awesome. Uh, you should begin using them immediately. MX makes a mark called X. You can make a mark called J, a mark called B, a mark called E. Uh, each key on your key bind can have a separate mark bound to it. And these are permanent. Like when you quit and come back in, it'll reload your mark, your mark file. This little uh, Y is yank, copy. Copy everything until mark X. B puts you into visual mode. Uh, Q or starts or ends recording. So QA starts recording macro A, and then when you're done with your keystrokes, you hit Q, stop recording. Uh, thanks for shaving off fun hours of tedious work for my life. I know, I, I'm trying, dude, you yeah. know. It's like, you know, I had computer science friends there. They just enjoyed spending hours wasting their life. I, I don't get it, you know. Like, just go to rock bottom, play some pool, you know. No, 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 no. I'm gonna run 500 Unix commands by hand. I'm like, write a shell script. Let's go. Oh, that seems like a lot of work. <sighs> it's a lot more work to run 500 commands by hand, trust me. Like, it'll take us like a minute to get your shell script set up. Then we can start the shell script. It's gonna run for the next eight hours. But we can go over there, you just lock the screen, just go over to rock bottom, play some pool, come back. Check in on it. No, it's too much work. Kill me, kill me, yeah. QA begins recording macro A, Q at the end of that, stop. At A plays macro A, at at plays the last macro. So all you have to do is say play macro A once. And then after that, you can just add at. So you can actually just keep hitting at 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 again, and it'll just run down, run down your file. B's the beginning of a word, he's the end of the word. Carrot's the beginning of a line. Dollar signs the end of the line. A appends after the current spot. Shift A appends at the end of the line. Shift I appears at the, uh, inserts at the beginning of the line. Shift A. Shift I. Okay. Uh, D2W deletes two words. YW copies a word. O opens the line below. 
Shift O opens the line above. Okay. And then whenever you finish a macro, always finish at the beginning. Like if I always start my macros at the beginning of the line because it's a nice anchor point. And I, you know, work over, you know, I'll be doing all this stuff on, on this line, right? Uh, and then I finish by going back, shift six, down, stop the macro. And then that allows me to replay the macro. It modifies the line, moves to the next line, replay the macro, modifies the line, moves to the next line. It is just so nice. It is so wonderful at just, you know, there's a lot of tasks in computer science that are very repetitive and macros just are amazing. So that's it for today, guys. Your lab time for today is to write a macro to generate Hello World, your, your Greenfield uh, macro, right? So when you start a new uh, file, you can just spit it out. I don't want a screenshot of this. I actually want you to type the keys that you typed to type this. So I actually, I actually want your keystrokes. I want you to type your keystrokes that it took for you to make this for me. And that, my friends, is it. Have a wonderful weekend. I will catch you on the flip side. Peace.